Now, uh, the main companies, two companies uh, which are undervalued right now, compare with them previously, it would be uh, Robert Huff and uh, KFI, Corn and Ferry companies. Okay, we look at them. The, uh, even though they work in the same kind of industry, business industry, but they work with different type of clients. Okay, and we looked at Robert Huff. Mostly they work, like Ian said, with generals. So they look at leadership and top uh, management. Where uh, KFI, they work with a lot of financial, legal, technological uh, companies in this sector. Okay, so and we're going to look at this. Uh, two companies. Okay, let's have a look at probably two main things. Okay, one of them is right now at the price of $38 and another is at the price of $20. And uh, let's have a look at the value line reports right now. I'll open it. Okay, let's uh, first look at value line report. Value line is pretty fresh. So it's 7th of October. So it's not a month old. The price is about the same, $38. Now, uh, straight away, we looked at price in race is 13.7. Okay. And if we're trying to look at previous price union ratio, we can see that starting from 2011, it was 26, 19, 20, 21, 20. So we can tell straight away that right now, company uh is on a sale of much low multiple that it used to be before okay so that's that's a good news for us as investor now another uh thing which we can straight away to have a look at's uh, value line because value line analyzes this company for quite a while and uh, they can have certain prediction and we can see that they see this company between 65 and 85 dollars in price within the next three to five years from 19 to 21 so so it uh, shows us a growth on the maximum scale of 24 percent annually that's the price growth Okay, that's what they can expect growth in price. If we look at business growth, we can see uh, that revenue for the last five years was growing 7.5%, but earnings were 24% growth, so which is pretty good. Okay, and that's what I was explaining that sometimes when the company is growing, uh, because their margin is growing, the sales level growing, but the expenses not. So, and that's why their profit growing a bit faster than uh, their revenue but we can see that uh, projection for the future is much lower than uh, past growth okay and that's why uh, the price of the company was affected and we can see that the highest price was 63.3 dollars and now it's 38 dollars so it's about 30 percent more than 30 percent downsize okay nearly 40 percent right so it's uh, went down Okay, uh, that operating margin, so if you remember, it's 12.4, right? So $12, uh, it was at the lower scale in 2009, 4.3. That's what I was saying you, when the economy is going down, uh, businesses are not happy to pay high premium for the services. And that's why, they, of course, their profitability, because they have to give certain discounts, uh, their operating margin uh, goes down here as well. Okay, that's that's the thing. Now debt in uh, Robert Huff, it's only one million dollar, whereas the net profit, net profit is uh, three hundred and fifty-seven million annually. So it means that they can pay their debt within one day of work. Okay, uh, so it's very very easy to pay. So it's practically doesn't exist. Okay, so very good situation from cash perspective. Uh, if you look at the uh, current like balance sheet situation, we can see that they have uh, plenty of cash, right? About 238 million in cash. So, and um, current assets 1.4 billion, and current liabilities only zero, like 668 million. So, they have about what? About 800 million here in the current situation. So, it's pretty good. Okay. So, very good situation from that perspective. Uh, also, they pay dividends. It's about 2.4%. So it's much better than uh, banks in Europe, which are charging you. So uh, if you look at this, it looks healthier, right? So let's have a look at uh, 
our table which we're using okay perfect okay so robert half if you insert all these numbers uh you come up with a 42 points for quality okay and it's losing some points here because of industry if you analyze this company a few months back you will see that value line had uh, industry rank 8 and now it's 78 okay and uh, now timeliness 4 and the timeliness was i think 2 or even 1 uh, before uh, but safety is still 2 so it's pretty good debt is really low beta is it's okay okay it's pretty volatile company but not that volatile uh, pro like earnings always growing faster than sales so that's good for us but we can see that projection here it's a bit low but still it's getting four and uh, that's why we get 42 points so it's above 40 it means it's pretty good based on TACN guide and uh, uh, like a good quality company now if we look at uh, points from level of sales uh, important part that like average price union ratio for the last five years it was 21.4 right current price in race it's even smaller uh, it's about 13 but still uh, much lower than the average price in race now if we look at uh, and trying to understand price in race based on their maximum highs and maximum lows so kind of uh, we will see that if we add all the highest points and then create average it would be 46 dollars and if we take that average earnings during these five years was 1.86 so the price in ratio would be here 24 right and then we take the lowest uh, points every year and then we divide by same earnings average earnings we come up with the average low price in ratio which is 17. so we expect that sometimes in the future sometimes in the future company might be uh, at the highest point and sometimes it has to be at 17 but now we can see that it's already 13 so it's lower than tacn guide so uh, if we look at tacn guide here we will see that it has to be between like the buying price between 45 and 62 right above 62 until nearly 80 dollars it's a holding price and then already we consider to sell it it's actually very similar to what value line has but at the moment price is 38 dollars so it's below that level so that's why we give the highest point for that it's 52 uh, points and uh, it's like the best time to purchase this company based on that now very important uh, take into consideration your strategy of course how long are you planning to hold the stock uh, what kind of strategy you're going to use are you going to use options or are you just buying and holding uh, this position and if you do what are you going to do if economy go goes down because in this case uh, the price of this company can go down as well so you need to kind of be careful on that particular sense now earnings they're going to be i think tonight or tomorrow i actually will tell you now just in a second uh, Richai, they are going to be uh, after market closed uh, tonight. So it means that uh, I mean uh, because we live in Australia, so we will see them tomorrow morning Australian time. So after the market closed uh, tomorrow morning, okay, and uh, then already you can make certain decisions if you want to buy or not uh, based on their results okay and their outlook so you can listen the report while you're traveling to work tomorrow and uh, probably make your own decision about this particular company all right so uh, another thing which i wanted to show you is um, let's have a look just a second uh, i'm going to show you uh, their balance sheet because if we go to value line okay that's what we can see book value per share seven dollars okay great so that's what we can see goodwill is 200 million intangible assets 4000 okay so total assets 1.7 billion right and we have to deduct that and then we have to deduct liabilities but liabilities are really low here so we can see that net tangible assets 790 million dollars here 
okay so and we can see liabilities actually there whereas uh, if we look at uh, the value line report we don't see those liabilities uh, just second a lot quarterly data Uh, they still have that here, total liabilities. All right, it's current liability, so they don't have long-term debt, but they have uh, current liabilities. Uh, but that's all right. Okay, so current liability. But that's how book value calculates. So you take 17.1.7 uh, billion minus total liabilities. Okay, you get uh, total shareholders equity, and then you divide by it. Uh, by amount of shares and you get book value all right but if you look at net tangible assets so we can see the difference here it's about 20 percent okay and uh, that means if we go to book value which calculated here it wouldn't be 7.6 it's actually would be 20 percent less not 8.7 because it shows bigger so it would be 20 percent less so it's about uh, what uh, 1.8 dollars less 1. yeah 8 dollars less okay so it's about seven dollars book value so that's the important thing 